Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one's entitled Locating Planet X. Now, Planet X objects or Planet X systems, stellar cores, are the cores of dead off or severely energy depleted stars and planets which come into the solar system as comets. The largest ones are not able to interact with Earth matter and will have to go to the Sun to find matter and that they can interact with. And you may look at Article 569 entitled Effect of Planet X Objects as Large as the Sun on the Earth Energy Levels. However, objects about the same size as the Earth and smaller will be able to find material on the Earth that they can interact with. The largest objects will be able to interact with magma inside the Earth and some will interact only with atmospheric material. And here you can see some very uh, rounded clouds, uh, obviously very close to spherical. And these would be indicative of a Planet X object being in our atmosphere because they are all surrounded in a cloud envelope. So, of course, absolutely spherical clouds are not natural. So we would expect this to actually be a Planet X object inside its cloud envelope. And you can see another one there. This one... Uh, was observed to hover in the same position for an extended period of time. So this was over Japan. And this comes from a YouTube video by Secure Team 10 entitled Ominous Sphere. It just sat there in the fog from January 19, 2019. Now all the objects arrive, as I said, with cloud envelopes. The cloud is made out of tiny droplets of liquid water and a part of the object's debris field as the water used to be a part of the planets that broke up and became stellar cores. The objects gain energy through this cloud as the water molecules exchange electrons with the Earth's atmosphere. And since the Earth electrons in the Earth's atmosphere are high in gravitational energy, the water molecules gain gravitational energy, which they then pass on to the stellar core. Since all the objects, no matter what the size, seem to be surrounded in these water cloud envelopes, and since objects of different size will have different electric potentials and will thus be at different energy levels, this can only occur if water is different from other materials, in that water is able to interact with other materials across a huge range of energy levels. This may be due to water being able to easily change density. And this means that all Planet X objects entering the Earth's atmosphere will be able to interact with and have an effect on water on the Earth's surface. And here you can see um, an image and it's a stereo core to image. You see a very large one, very large object. And you can see many other objects here in the Sun's outer corona. And all of them are surrounded by this cloud material. And this is their cloud envelope. So they all surround it with water. And you may look at Article 529 entitled Planet X Debris Field and Water Clouds for more details. Now when the smallest Planet X object, which may be about 250 feet across, and for details on that you may look at Article 547 entitled Planet X Covered Up by the Moon, Hologramming the Earth's Atmosphere. When these objects approach the Earth, they will be attracted via the electrostatic interaction because there is matter on Earth which matches the electric potential, i.e. the least dense matter in the Earth or atmosphere, but because they initially are so low in gravitational energy, they will at first have a repelling effect on the atmospheric matter. The interaction will be tidal in nature, so only the matter in the cylindrical region between the surface and the surface of the Earth will be affected. And since they all seem to be able to interact with water, water on the surface will be affected as well. Since the interaction is initially repelling, the ocean level below the object will decrease and water will become denser. And the atmosphere in the cylindrical region will also become denser, thus creating a high-pressure region within the atmosphere.
And here you see another one of these objects inside its cloud envelope, which does not completely cover it. In this case, the object is dark and clearly spherical, and it is most likely a small moon core. I think it would be quite a small object, but definitely a stellar core within the Earth's atmosphere. So um, this diagram illustrates how newly arrived small stellar cores are only able to interact with atmosphere and water. They repel the atmosphere and water and therefore create a cylindrical shaped region of high pressure and a cylindrical shaped region of water at a higher density than normal. So this is illustrated here. So this is when they first arrive. They will create a high pressure and they will create a hollow on the ocean below them. Once in the atmosphere, the object will absorb gravitational energy through its cloud envelope. And as its gravitational energy increases, the interaction becomes less repelling and eventually becomes attractive so that a low pressure is produced in the cylindrical region and a tidal bulge instead of a tidal hollow is produced on the surface of the ocean. Since the objects produce high and low pressures, it is possible to locate them on a weather map. And a low pressure region also, well, when they have been here for a while and have gained some energy, then they produce uh, a low pressure region. And so this is illustrated here. And of course, a low pressure region by itself cannot exist within the atmosphere. It has to be the product of a stellar core, a massive object that is generating a gravitational force and is affecting the object. And so a low pressure would immediately by itself would immediately be equalized by air flowing into the air pressure region and it would become equalized. All the air in this region would uh, end up with the same density. So the low pressure region would immediately disappear. So it takes one of these objects and their tidal influence to create a low pressure within the Earth's atmosphere. And you may look at Article 484 in Tidal Planet X, the course behind low pressure weather systems. Since the powers that be ionize the atmosphere in order to attract the objects to a certain location and thus control the weather on the planet, it is likely that where there are high and low pressures, there may be other objects which may be a lot larger and may not be able to interact with the atmosphere and will thus not produce high or low pressures, but may instead be able to induce earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So on a weather map like this, which indicates pressure, the low pressures are uh, this light gray and the high pressures are this red and purple, then you can find where the high and the low pressures are. And you can see a high pressure here. It's most likely produced by one of these small stellar cores that has recently arrived and one that has been here for a while and has now been, uh, a, is now able to produce this low pressure. It's most likely over this region here. So uh, they can be found, they can be located through the use of weather maps. And you can see the wind usually uh, moves away from this region. It's repelling the air away from the region of tidal influence where its gravitational wave is forming. Whilst here it's attracting the air, the air is moving in towards it. It's attracting the atmosphere. So in conclusion, all Planet X objects seem to be able to interact with water. Small Planet X objects entering the Earth's atmosphere create both high and low pressures, as well as higher than normal and lower than normal density in water, and thus giving rise to sea level changes. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.